Dit is de GNSS-receiver. Uh, de signalen van de satellieten worden hier opgevangen. Het gaat naar, via de kabels naar uh, het blauwe doosje daar, waar een uh, receiver in zit en een PC-unit die de data verwerkt en via de antenne doorstuurt naar uh, de antennes op de toren. Wel, eh, wat we nu aan het ontwikkelen zijn, eh, maakt het mogelijk om op zondagmiddag om twee uur, als bijvoorbeeld de Formule 1 begint, dat een gamer mee kan gaan racen met Lewis Hamilton en eh, bijvoorbeeld eh, de andere professionele rijders. The circuit at Zandvoort with its notorious Tarzan corner. The Dutch company Eyeopener is trying out its latest invention, competing in a real-life Formula One race in the comfort of your own home. That's the challenge. GPS receivers positioned on the racing cars send the car's current position to the gamer at home. Op dit moment met de toptesten bij ons zit op 17 centimeter nauwkeurigheid met GPS. Dat kunnen we met betere equipment terughalen naar 10 centimeter. En de verwachting met Galileo is dat we naar 2 à 3 centimeter nauwkeurigheid kunnen. Bij GPS zit je toch met een element dat in geval van nood voor de uh, Amerikaanse militairen wij geen gebruik kunnen maken van het systeem. Turn left on North East Upper Road. From Zandvoort to Colorado Springs in the United States, a high-security American Air Force base. This is the nerve center of GPS. Arriving at address one, on right. Every GPS user around the world is dependent on what happens inside the Shriva Air Force Base. We are flying the world's largest uh, military constellation of satellites. Uh, currently, 31 global positioning system satellites. They're approximately 10,900 miles up in orbit. Go to active now, SVN 24, Kwajalein. We're doing a visual state of health, a NAV upload, a global burst detection dump, and an MCL check. We are providing sub three meter navigation accuracy to all of our users around the world, military uh, and civilian. That includes your latitude, your longitude, elevation, and then also your speed, your change of direction. Step five, going up active now, 45, Quadrilene, B-string, state of health, navigation upload, global burst detector dump, post-eclipse monitor. Step six, it's a good order and we're in the window. A minimum of once a day, we are going to do a navigation upload. What that basically means is we are then able to go and to zero-eyes any errors that might be present in that particular satellite with drift, positive or negative, that might be present for that particular satellite uh, to then enable each individual satellite its most precise, accurate clock and ephemeris states to all users. As long ago as the 1960s, the American Army was working on GPS, but it wasn't until 1978 that the first GPS satellite was launched. Five years later, President Reagan decided that from now onwards, GPS could also be used for non-military applications. This was a reaction to the accidental shooting down by a Russian fighter of a Korean airliner that had strayed from its scheduled course. During the first Gulf War in 1991, the American army used GPS to find its way in the desert from Kuwait and Iraq. The satellite images were also meant to show that precision bombing led to fewer victims among the civilian population. It was only in 1995 that all the satellites were finally launched. The Americans intentionally ensured that the GPS signal for civilian use was degraded and only accurate up to 100 meters. It was President Clinton who brought the so-called limited accuracy of GPS to an end. On May 1st of 2000, President Clinton provided a presidential directive that directed us to turn off selective availability, which was an intentional error that we had put in the signal so that only the trusted users would get the most accurate signal. I was fortunate enough to be here in the squadron 
back in 2000 on a prior assignment. And we implemented uh, that change here with our operators at Shriver Air Force Base. A change that would have far-reaching consequences for every GPS user in the world. All at once, GPS signals were accurate down to 10 meters. Up until then, GPS had remained primarily an American military instrument. This heralded the beginning of the commercial boom of the GPS business. Thanks to the American satellites, a GPS receiver can calculate perfectly your present position. Although to discover which road to take to arrive in Ghent, for example, you need a digital card. One of the biggest card manufacturers is Ghent-based Teleatlas. Teleatlas is worth 2.9 billion euro on the stock exchange, thanks to GPS and without the help of Galileo. We have a gemiddelde groei gekend van above the 20 percent, and we see actually that the groei in the future, ook qua omzet, above the 20 percent blijft. To keep its digital cards up to date. Teleatlas has 21 mobile mapping vans constantly on the road throughout Europe. That is a mobile home where there are six cameras staan and they register alles. Dus alle wegmarkeringen, alle verkeersborden, they worden allemaal gefilmd. The images received from the mobile mapping vans are reviewed and compared to the current database, though not in Ghent, but by staff in India. Op één scherm worden de beelden geprojecteerd en op een ander scherm daarnaast wordt ons databank geprojecteerd. Zij, ga, zij lopen door die beelden en zij checken eigenlijk continu af of dat ons databank nog altijd up-to-date is naar gelang wat zij zien in de realiteit op de beelden. Zoals uh, snelheidsbeperkingen richting aanwijzers, maar ook uh, informatie die op de straat te vinden is, zoals de rijrichting waarin het verkeer mag rijden. De beelden die gemaakt worden door de fans worden ook gebruikt om driedimensionale beelden of driedimensionale modellen te maken van steden. San Francisco is daar één voorbeeld van. En die gegevens, die foto's worden gebruikt om op de gebouwen te kleven als het ware, zodanig dat dat beeld, dat driedimensionaal beeld, nog heel wat reëler wordt dan wat men traditioneel kan met een grafisch pakket. Since as little as 15% of cars in Europe have an onboard satellite navigation system, there's obviously an enormous growth margin. But you can also go further. You can also go GPS chips gaan uh, stoppen in, in portable computers, for example. People have these cars now steeds more nodig. Net zoals op telefoontjes uh, de het foto toestel in the beginning iets heel raars was, is nu bijna moeilijk om om een telefoon zonder foto toestel te kopen. Precies hetzelfde zal gebeuren met, uh, met kaarten. Uh, ook op laptops zou je onmogelijk uh, zonder kaarten kunnen, kunnen leven. Voor mobile phone manufacturer Nokia, digital cards also seem to be indispensable. Bij de tweede straat, links, afslaan. It recently bought Navtech, Teleatlas's competitor. Mobile phones with built-in GPS can do a lot more than simply calculate your route. With the Nokia GPS device, you can also download city guides when you are traveling for a city trip somewhere in Europe, for example. You can download the city guide of the city you are visiting and enjoy the navigation in the city and also the hotels, the restaurants and so on. There still remain other applications that are conceivable for mobile phones with GPS. For example, uh, child tracking. If you have kids, you want to know where they are, you could uh, track them. Uh, via their uh, GSM or GPS enabled uh, device. The route is berekend. GPS gaat, gaat eigenlijk maatschappelijk een, een must worden. Ja. En als je dan uh, die afhankelijkheid hebt van iets wat in handen is van één bepaald land of één bepaalde staat en dan nog meer in bijzonder van militairen die eigenlijk op een tegen welk moment theoretisch zouden kunnen beslissen om het systeem uh, stil te leggen of om het terug qua accuratheid naar beneden te, te trekken, eh, dat, is een beetje, dat is een beetje lastig.